It's Mr. Slav here. One of the reasons why I decided to make this one is that some people refuse to believe that there is a sound in space. Well, no shit, of course there's no ordinary sound in Wacom like it's a Star Wars movie, but there's a different way to hear it. You hear a radio, right? But there's no small singer inside the box. Radio somehow knows which noise to make by converting radio waves that can travel through air and vacuum into the sound. Basically, we use spacecraft as our ears and these ears gather radio data which we convert into audible sound. Without dragging this any further, I present you this creepy sound. Sounds pretty scary, right? Well, it actually is. You see, this sound represents one of the most dangerous space events that could pretty much send us to medieval age. This is the sound of solar wind, made out of protons, electrons and heavier ions. The solar wind travels through the solar system at around 1.6 million kilometers per hour or 1 million miles per hour. This wind was recorded by NASA's Parker probe which was designed to observe our sun's atmosphere. So why did I say that this could possibly make us peasants? If a big enough solar storm happened and hit our earth directly, such thing could possibly destroy many electronic devices, power grid, internet, banking systems, vehicle electronic systems, which means food supply shock, GPS navigation and many more bad stuff. But fear not, such powerful storm is very unlikely, especially since uh, it has to hit our earth directly. Also, do you hear the sound? This is the sun itself. If there was a magical air between earth and the sun, it would allow us to hear sun with our ears. But it wouldn't be pleasant, because uh, there would be a constant, non-stop 100 decibels loud hum. And 100 decibels is as loud as standing near a subway train. This sound was conceived in 2005 by a spacecraft which actually entered one of Saturn's moon, Titan. During the descent this Higgins probe had sent many radar echoes to help scientists understand the nature of the Titan's surface. These echoes were converted into audible sounds. And in the last scary sounds in space video you can also hear a real Titan wind captured by the same Higgins probe. The atmosphere in Titan is so dense and gravity so low that us humans holding and flapping some of sort of wings could possibly fly there like a bird. Now for a collection of some small to medium cosmic bodies. What you are hearing here is a magnetic field of a comet named 67P Cherumov Gerasimenko, a 4.3 km or 2.7 mile wide comet which is orbiting Jupiter. Space probe called Rosetta was flying so close to it that it also filmed the surface. This is an actual video. Since this comet was singing at a very low frequencies, we wouldn't be able to hear it, so scientists increased frequency 10,000 times. Strangely, we don't know why it is making this noise. Maybe it's a hunting Arnold. 
In 2011, Juno probe started observing Jupiter, in fact it still is doing that, orbiting the giant like that muscular dude orbits my gym's receptionist. During its mission it observed not only Jupiter, but also its moons like for example one of the more mysterious one called Europa. When it was doing a flyby it observed plasma waves which varied in density, creating different tones, hence the science fiction -y sound. This sci-fi creepy sound is of Jupiter's ionosphere, which means the place between lower atmosphere and interplanetary space. Data came from the same Juno spacecraft. Voyager 2, the oldest working spacecraft back in 1986, reached Uranus and uh, unlike many other sounds, they are absolutely not modified or edited. Which means frequency is the same, science guys didn't need to increase any of it. If you are wondering what was this exact sound, no, it wasn't the hell, it was probably plasma oscillations. Well, to be honest, I was expecting a different sound in Uranus. So far we heard sounds which were made out of various radio and plasma waves, but this is a different one. Since we did uh, get a rover on Mars, we actually have a recording of a Mars quake. That's right, just like Earth, Mars also has unstable crust. This Mars quake was weak though, about magnitude of 3.3, which is thousands of times weaker than some stronger ones in Earth. But previously Mars was way more active, I mean just look at the size of some of the hills. Olympus Mons is the largest mountain in the solar system, but it's also cool that there are quakes in our little moon, Venus, Mercury and the Sun. And I am not sure if the sound is real, but mercury quakes sound like this. And the star quakes sound like this. Star quakes usually happen in neutron stars, but Gaia spacecraft, which is designed to measure positions, distances and motions of stars with precision, proved that ordinary stars also shake. They have vibrations which move like some sort of tsunamis. And for the last planet that I want to cover, it is our own. Scientists at Technical University of Denmark have taken magnetic signals measured with a satellite and converted them into sound. What happens when meteors strike our atmosphere? Well, they leave a trail of ionized particles. This trail reflects radio waves from radio stations for a short period of time, and what we get is this weird sound called wailing of the Leonids. Why it's scary? Meteors. Don't like them. Can smash Earth. 
we have to leave little cosmic objects and turn our ears towards bigger objects with more power and more bass. I swear this sounds like a flying saucer from a bad 50s sci-fi flick. This is a sound of pulsations that belongs to a red giant star called 74 Draconis. What are pulsations and why stars have a pulse? You see, hot gases raises to the outer layers, cools down and sinks again, repeating this process for millions or billions of years. Each pulsation is actually extremely slow, so scientists had to speed it 3 million times, so we could hear different notes. Interesting fact is that Draconis star is moving towards our sun at the eye-watering speed of 14 km or 9 miles per second. But don't worry, it is so far away that it will likely take more than 5 million years. In 1970s, Ohio University was listening to deep space using radio telescope called Big Ear. They actually were tasked to search for extraterrestrial life, unexpectedly. One day in 1977, for 72 seconds, a strange signal appeared. The signal came from constellation Sagittarius and was so strong that astronomer Jerry Eggman was so amazed that he wrote WOW near the data. This signal lasted 72 seconds and never appeared again. There were many theories but we are still not 100% sure what caused it. Kinda fascinating that this signal was probably sent hundreds of years ago, back when Napoleon was on the loose. One of the most extreme objects in space are pulsars, which are spinning magnetized neutron stars that are just around 15 kilometers or 10 miles wide, and weigh more than our sun. These things are so incredibly powerful, so powerful that they emit electromagnetic radiation out of their magnetic poles which can be seen millions of light years away. So when these radio waves reach us, we can convert it to sound and see how fast these balls are spinning. For example, here is the sound of a slow spinning pulsar, just 1.4 times per second. Quite terrifying when you imagine a ball that weighs as much as the sun, size of a big city and spinning just like a roulette wheel. But they can be even faster. For example, this one pulsar is going at around uh, around 11 times per second. And this one, well, this one is spinning 174 times per second. <laughs> Wanna hear one of the most ancient sounds of the universe? Even before our Earth, Sun or any other cosmic object was out there, there was this ancient sound. It moved at more than half the speed of light through a superheated plasma. The Planck Space Telescope was able to pick up a very deep ancient rumble of the universe which is 47 octaves lower than the bottom note of a piano. So scientists had to increase frequency otherwise we would die before hearing a change in the note. By the way, for those that are interested about the ancient sound, you can read more about it by searching Berion Acoustic Oscillations. If you fully understand it, props to you, because I don't. People in NASA needed more fun, so instead of converting radio frequencies, they made sonification of images, 
but the data was not simply RGB colors converted into sound waves, but it was a combination of various data like infrared light, which is invisible to human eye. Each layer of sound in these sonifications represents particular wavelengths of light. Here's a few that might make your hair stand up.